Hello mates and lasses, this is 155mm bringing you another video. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm going to uh, get ready to do the, as usual, always, and as always, as always interesting video that we like to call the AR-15 versus AK-47 video coming up soon. Now, in order to do that, I got to bring you guys facts, like I do in a lot of my videos. I usually like to try to use the shooting videos to bring you guys facts on what I'm going to talk about. I mean, as you guys already know, I'm sure you guys know I'm a fan of the Black Rifle. Okay, there's no doubts about that. Okay, we, we, we can make we can make no mistake about that. But like I said, man, I'm you know I'm just like everybody else here on YouTube. I'm just having an opinion. It's my opinion. Don't uh, don't let me don't let what I say uh, you know deter you from your favorite rifle. You know, I uh, you know, I don't hate the AK. You know, like I said, I got an AK. I got I like my AK chambered in 12 gauge. But. Uh, as far as it being a you know a bad rifle, you know I don't hate it. Um, you know if someone gave me one, I'd keep it. Probably shoot it once and then you know I probably you know sit in the corner somewhere. But I don't hate it. You know you guys know what I'm into, and uh, that's that's the type of precision accuracy of engaging small, being able to get to engage small targets at a pretty good distance. You know so. That's why I like to have a firearm that's accurized and as well quickly can be reloadable. You know, can quickly be reloaded. You know, it's super fast. You know, of course you can load an AR-15 probably faster than you can an AK-47. Okay. I mean, that's pretty much without a doubt. And a lot of people argue, say, well, no, nah, you can't load it faster than my than my AK-47. Well, I say if you were the same person and you were on an AK and you were on a, you were on an AR-15 with the bolt hole back, I can pretty much guarantee you. You may be a bad dude on the AK-47, but I can pretty much guarantee you if you trained with this rifle, you would still be able to load this rifle faster than your AK, without a doubt, because this rifle has, of course, has a bolt hole back. You know, of course, it doesn't always work. Okay, yeah. Well, <clears throat> there's all kinds of things we can throw in there, guys. I'm just talking, you know, uh, standard common sense type stuff. <clears throat> now, let's talk about accuracy. Uh, you know, the AR-15. Now, you guys, in all actuality, man, instead of doing an AR-15 versus AK-47 video, I would much more enjoy doing a video comparing AR-15 to AR-15. Because, in my opinion, there are two types of AR-15s. You have the AR-15s that have accurized barrel like th barrels like this one, and then you have the standard run-of-the-mill AR-15s that have a 1 to 2 MOA capability at 100 yards. Now, the, AR the accurized barreled or heavy barreled AR-15s like this one, they pull 0.5 minute of angle, you know, bullets groups at 100 yards whereas the standard run of the mill 1 to 2 MOA people like to say it's a 1 1 MOA the standard AR15s are 1 MOA I'm not going to mention any manufacturer's name because I don't like to put down anybody's rifles but uh, we pretty much know what uh, what I'm talking about when I say standard AR15 you know some of the ones that come out in these magazines etc uh, 16 inch barrels all the way to 20 inch barrels a lot of people like to say these are one MOA. Uh, they they can place one MOA bullets at 100 yards. Uh, I'm I'm going to go as far as to say no. I, I don't believe they can. I think they probably place two minute of angle, if if at all. You know, if that, at best. And like I said, people could prove me wrong easily by putting up a video. And you know, like I said, I'll I'll apologize. But you know, the standard run of the mill AR-15s. I think it's more of an argument between ARs than it is AR versus AK, if you know what I mean. What you doing? But uh, anyway, 
Uh, back to what I was saying. Accuracy, uh, accurized ARs, the black rifle versus the standard AR-15. Million of angle accuracy, guys. Uh, see the law. Basically, this would be the, I, I would consider kind of like the ballistics law of bullets. You know, uh, I think I heard one guy, one, one guy said one time, and he made a lot of sense when he said that. Uh, he said, you know, a 0.5 minute of angle barrel or rifle that could shoot groups that tightly at 100, you don't have to be as careful when you're shooting and still hit your target. Whereas, if you're using a 1 to 2 MOA barrel rifle at 100, you have to be very steady and you have to be more careful with that rifle in order to hit your target. For example, let me give you guys an idea, uh, some type of idea of just how bullets travel. And uh, <clears throat> this is on paper, dudes. If uh, you guys haven't seen this, I actually did this live. It's in this video and I'll put this video link right up here for you guys. Uh, basically I show you that I shoot these, I trace these dimes and I shoot them at a hundred and I show you how the bullet basically, and by the way, this is in a controlled environment with no wind. So it shows, uh, you know, everything, it shows the, it shows there's not, not much that, uh, basically can throw the bullet and it goes, it'll show you the proper placement, how bullets travel when they travel through the air. Now, here we go, for example. Okay, we have uh, these dime traces, right? Look at the circumference, circumference of this circle, where it lands on this dime. Okay, these two shots are strays. Don't worry about those. Uh, I, I totally missed. That was my screw up on those. But right here, if you look at the circumference, you'll see the bullet hit right on the exact same spot. Now, look down here. The circumference of this dime. It hit on the exact same circumference, only on the other side of the dime. Okay, down here. Right here. Okay, hit in the exact same circumference, only it's in a different position on the dime. You notice that? Here, this one was just a little bit off. That was probably my fault. You know, it could have been ammo, but I'll, I'll take the blame because I don't like to make excuses like wind and you know, for my misses or my screw-ups. That wasn't a perfect shot. These were perfect shots. I screwed up on that one, that one, and that one. But, this this right here shows you guys basically uh, how a bullet, when it leaves the barrel of a rifle, when a bullet leaves the barrel of a rifle, it starts to spin. It's spinning. The bullet itself is spinning the whole time because of the lands and grooves. But when it leaves the rifle, it starts it, the, the barrel no longer can control that bullet. So that bullet starts to spin in a circle as it's traveling towards the dime or the paper. And see, the point of aim, which is the middle, the center, where I aimed in the center, you will never hit that area with a 0.5 minute of angle AR-15 barrel, accurized. You will never, all this in the middle is dead space. That bullet's always going to travel and hit the outside of this dime. Because, see, the bullet starts, as soon as it leaves the barrel, it's spinning all the way through the barrel. When it leaves the barrel, it starts to spin in a circle when it, when it gets in the air. And it'll hit in the same circumference. Now, once you get out to 200 yards, which is what I'm going to show you right now, the same thing. That circle that the bullet was spinning in, it starts to get bigger. That circle starts to go, it starts to get bigger. The circle becomes bigger. Uh, like I said, this, the circle that I was shooting at, it had to be bigger as well because in order to get that bullet inside there because all this becomes dead space in the center. Now, you can see right here, of course, many things, many different things come into play with this right here once you get to 200 yards, man. Temperature, wind, uh, let's see, uh, uh, the, load, the load itself, you know, the loads itself, I was using cheap uh, Walmart ammo, but, you know, like I said, Remington's doing a pretty good job with those rounds because, uh, you know, or not Remington, I'm sorry, not Remington, Federal, my fault, it's, they're Federal, I was using Federal, 
But Federal must be using the must be doing a pretty good job with those rounds because they're pretty close to being a you know match match accuracy. You know, they were cheap uh, Walmart. But as you can see, you can see this this circle right here. Okay, boom, hit on the outside of this circle. Now right here, this this at 200 yards, dude, this possibly could be, you know, why it's in like that. That's probably my fault somehow, you know. Um, of course, you know, otherwise it would be right around the circle right here. As you can see right here, right around the circle, just a little bit off that circle. Okay. And a lot of, you know, like I said, a lot of things happen. You know, there's a lot of variables at 200 yards when you're engaging a circle that is uh, basically was this circle was traced off of a silver dollar. So when you're trying to shoot at a silver dollar from 200 yards, there's a lot of variables. But as you can see, the bullet has still hit around the circumference, right here. Okay, you see where the bullet had hit at the right around the circle. So see, this all all this stuff right in here is dead space. Okay, it's something, if you make the perfect shot and everything goes the way it's supposed to go, you'll never hit the center part. You're only going to hit because that bullet is traveling in a circle. And that circle gets bigger and bigger all the way out. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that, that's a screw up right there. These three, these three right here will show you what I'm talking about when I say that bullet's spinning. Not just the bullet itself spinning, it's actually spinning in a just like this all the way through the air and it gets bigger that 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 circle that is spinning into gets bigger and bigger now at the 300 yards we have again this right here that's probably some screw up that I had right here and uh, even though I hit the target but right here you know again I screwed up you know everything not everything went right on this one so it's outside. Otherwise, it would have there would have been a certain you know my bullet would have landed somewhere inside here. Now that's that's a three inch circle at three hundred yards. So you guys gotta 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 imagine what a two MOA rifle, okay, standard AR fifteen. What kind of accuracy are you gonna get with that? Out the three at 300 yards if you're engaging this circle right here I'm pretty sure you're gonna miss all day long dudes uh, pretty darn sure you're gonna miss all day long unless it happens to be some kind of screw up but that's the reason why most people look at it to be AR-15 versus AK-47 I don't look at it as that man I, to me and don't take this wrong guys uh, you know, I'm not trying to talk down you guys AKs because I don't hate AKs or you know anything like that. Uh, I, it's just not my thing. But to me, AK-47 isn't even in the same same realm as an AR-15. I mean, as a real AR-15, as an accurized AR-15, and actually, it's not even in a, <laughs> the same realm as a, a regular run-of-the-mill AR. You know, from the factory, it's just it's just not, man. Uh, you know, I know the, the AK-47s, you know, maybe at best, and you can prove me wrong again, you know, by making a video on that shooting, but at best, most of them that I've seen are, you know, um, probably three MOA at 100 yards, and that accuracy, guys, remember, that accuracy, when the bullet is spinning, and as it gets out, three MOA at 100 yards, gets out to the target, Boom, you got three inches of dead space right there. Well, one MOA is a little bit over an inch. I don't remember exactly what it is, but you guys know what I'm talking about. When it hits, you got three MOA of dead space. When you get out to 200 yards, you're engaging a target. Okay, you got to think. It's up to or twice that minute of angle of dead space. So that makes six MOA of dead space. Now you get out to 300 yards. It's three times that, up to and three times that. That makes nine MOA of dead space. So you get out to uh, 400 yards, okay? That's 12 MOA of dead space. 
than 500 yards, 15 MOA of dead space. Dudes, if you're engaging a 16-inch steel plate at 500 yards, and you got uh, 15, 15 MOA of dead space, I can almost guarantee you you're not going to hit that target at 500 yards. I mean, it's going to be a luck shot, man. It doesn't even have anything to do with you being uh, very, very careful when you're pulling your shot. As I said, you can be more sloppy with an accurized AR-15 than you can with a standard run-of-the-mill 1-2 to two MOA AR-15. But when you're talking about an AK, well, geez, uh, you're talking about a lot of slop with the, uh, with the barrel. And guys, like I said, man, I don't know a lot about the AKs, man. I mean, there might be some guys out there running some accurized barrels out there, or might be some kind of accurized barrels out there for the AKs that, you know, I mean, you know, they might be some hot rods, dude, you know. So, like I said, I'm not talking down the, the rifles. I'm just merely talking about, uh, you know, accuracy. And in accuracy, these rifles aren't even in the same, uh, they're not even in the same league. I mean... Today's accurized AR-15s, man, you're looking at you're looking at AR-15s, dude, that can that can dang near hold accuracy with a Remington 700. You know, except for you know the 308's got a lot more power behind it. Of course, it can reach out a lot farther. But you're talking about accuracy, pinpoint accuracy within ah, one to five hundred yards. You're talking about. Some of these accurized AR-15s are almost able to stay up hand in hand with them, with the Remington 700 bolt action. And we're talking about semi-automatic rifles versus a bolt action rifle. Bolt action rifles are always going to be more, be more accurate than a semi-auto. You know. So, anyway, enough of the blah blah. Or guys, sorry to bore you with this video. And, again, man, I'm not trying to put on any AKs or anything like that for you guys. I know some of the guys like their AKs, and, you know, they're cool rifles. Uh, you know, they're, they're cool rifles, but I'm just talking about in the accuracy department. Uh, I'm, I'm into accurized type shooting, you know, of course, engaging small targets at what I consider to be pretty good distance. And an AK just doesn't do that for me. An AR does, and plus I can follow up with an AR, I can follow up, quickly with a semi-automatic with many rounds when I'm engaging. As you guys have seen also in my uh, video, and I'll put it up here, my engaging two-inch targets quickly under stress, under time stress, being able to gauge those targets, you know, without having, without a lot of kick and being able to jump on target, being able to engage most, multiple targets with an AR-15. There's a lot of rifles out there you can't really do that with. I mean, you get to the 308, you start getting a lot of kick behind it, and it throws you off target. It takes you a lot longer to engage that target. Okay. So, anyway, guys, just a little common sense, guys. And I'll come up uh, probably with another little video here, um, probably about the AKs or whatever, and AR-15s. All right, guys, uh, respectable sisters carry firearms, criminals carry weapons, and peace out.